Hi everybody, my name is Alex Kaplan. I'm a Q Coffee grader and head of coffee product at Cometeer. Join with me today as we brew some coffee. So first, I'm gonna start with a pour over, which is one really great and accessible way of making coffee. I'll walk you through the recipe and we can talk about some of its pros and cons. For today's recipe, I'm gonna follow along from one by my friend James Hoffman. We'll use 30 grams of this wonderful Peruvian coffee by Go Get em Tiger. All right, and I'm gonna grind these about medium fine on my home grinder here. So give me just one sec and I'll be right back. So here are our coffee grounds. I'll show you a few so that you can kind of see what they look like. We're looking for a texture somewhat similar to regular kosher salt. The best way to know what size grinds that'll work for you is to brew a few cups of coffee with them. See if the water is flowing through really nice and evenly or if it's getting choked up or flowing through too fast and you can adjust your grind size accordingly. Let's go ahead and start our brewing process. So the first step will be to rinse and preheat all of our brewing equipment. I have here today a V60 coffee cone and the filter paper, the O2 size that goes into that V60, as well as this really nice looking decanter to pour into. As I said, I'll start by rinsing and preheating all of my equipment just to wash away any papery flavor and make sure that the temperature is high enough for coffee brewing. Dump this out. And let's brew some coffee. So here's our 30 grams of grounds. I'm gonna start by just leveling them out and making a little divot in the middle so that water can flow through the bed really evenly. You can see this divot, some people call it like a bird's nest. It looks like that in the middle and gives the water a little bit of a reservoir so that it penetrates all of the grounds evenly. Now we're gonna start pouring our water. I like to pour in three separate increments. The first is called the bloom phase and it gives the water a chance to penetrate the grounds and allow the coffee to off gas or let that carbon dioxide come out so that the water can flow through during the rest of the brewing process. For the bloom, I'll use about twice the weight of the coffee in water. So I'll use 60 grams of water and allow that to bloom for about 30 seconds. After that, I'll pour the remainder of our 500 total grams of water in two increments. The first up to 300 grams and then the final up to 500 grams. After the coffee is bloomed, I like to give it a big swirl like this. This helps prevent any clumps from forming in the coffee and make sure that the water is evenly saturating all of the grounds in that bed. Smells delicious. So while you're making a pour over, some things to look out for is how the water is flowing through this bed. You want it to flow pretty evenly and not to clog up too much. So we've hit our 30 seconds here and I'm gonna pour up to 300 grams of total water. You can notice whether there's a huge pool of water sitting on top or whether it's kind of continually dripping through that coffee to see if your coffee is clogging. Another thing you can look for are these bubbles that are forming in our coffee there. If you have too many bubbles, it's a sign that you had some grounds that were still dry during the blooming process, and now they're starting to off gas. So next time you can either bloom a little bit more for a little bit longer or spin a little bit more vigorously. All right, so we're right at about 300 grams in total. I'll allow that to drain through for about 15 to 30 seconds, and then finish with the remaining 200 grams to brew our 500 gram uh, cup of coffee here. The most important thing to look at uh, when you're brewing coffee is how it tastes in the end. And I really recommend that you adjust your recipe based on what you like the taste of. So two of the most common things you'll notice is if you're over extracting the coffee using really fine grounds and maybe too much water, it can end up tasting kind of bitter and harsh on the palate. If you're under extracting the coffee using grounds that are potentially too coarse or using too little water, you'll notice a kind of thin and often somewhat sour flavor. In those cases, I recommend adjusting your grind size, either coarser or finer, based on what you notice in your cup. And there we are with our 500 grams of water. I'll let that drain through and preheat our little cups here while we wait. So what I love about the pour over is it's a pretty simple and straightforward way to make coffee. It's adjustable to different recipes so you can make less or more. The pour over is a really great way to start out in coffee. You'll see it at a lot of coffee shops um, and a great way to start brewing delicious coffee at home. Now, one of the last things you can look for during your pour over is as the water is draining through that final bed of coffee, you can try to see how flat those bed of grounds is at the end. If it's nice and flat, that indicates you had a really nice and even extraction. 
and the coffee uh, was all brewed really evenly. If you have big lumps or divots in it, it indicates that there was maybe a little bit of unevenness. Uh, the water didn't flow through all the grounds the same way. So this is pretty even, but we see a few lumps here, something for me to work on for next time. All right, our coffee is drained through in about three minutes and 20 seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and dump these grounds out and let's taste it. Remember to pour out your rinse water. So this is a great recipe for making one big or two regular size cups of coffee with that 500 grams of water. You can adjust it with less water or more water if you wanna make more or less coffee and make sure to adjust the amount of coffee grounds you're using accordingly. That's really good. This is a really wonderful coffee uh, from Peru, as I said, roasted by Go Get em Tiger. It has a beautifully clean and light palate with a ton of sweetness and vibrancy. Um, you can really taste some of those uh, more delicate flavors that come through this pour over process really well. Uh, and I'm really happy with it. So thanks for joining along. That's how you make a pour over.